I'm a big fan of the blockchain. It's a really ingenious way of storing information. Not massive information, but it's really good. And it, it's so good as, a, as an information storage, has such properties that it has the potential to become the property rights system of the digital age. And property rights are, are very important because they give us incentives to do something. Traditionally, in the agricultural age, we were all having property of land. The Wild West, right? We had to explore it. We had to get to the gold mine and we had to own it and we had to own that land. And we, and we had probably like the indigenous, they said like, how can you own land? We belong to the earth, not the other way around. But no, the Stone Age, the mines and the things and the agricultural land was very important to us. Countries fought wars over centuries, like every square yard in the mountain range was fought over because land is very important. That defines what a country is, supposedly. Anyway, so land, yeah. <laughs> Well, so much blood be shed and so many like, this is important, having property. And that, that's the agricultural age still. Now, then we learned how to transform energy and we had to patent that. What is the, the, the patent of potential? So the Industrial Revolution saw, saw patents of intellectual property rights that gives us property of an idea how you can transform something energetically. So the Edisons and the Henry Fords and so forth, they had these intellectual property rights that showed us how to build basically things that we can transform. But all of that doesn't really work for the information age. So the question is, how could you have property of, of, of symbols? Of, of information, of data, of, of knowledge. How could you have property of that? And he will just ask that. And we will ask like, okay, let's come up with a really good property rights system. How could we store information in such a way that we can actually make sure that what is stored is uniquely identifiable? And we just come up with a really good property rights system and it turns out once we have such a, a ledger that has all the, it clicks all the check marks, uh, it turns out, spoiler alert, at the end, the blockchain will fall out. That's basically what that is. It's an information ledger that is so good that you can assign property to information. Now, this property could be a, a monetary value. I could say they are $3 and I write that on the blockchain or three coins or whatever. Then we call it cryptocurrency. But that's all but one application, right? All the bitcoins and stuff, that's not uh, the, final, the final. You can write any, anything here. You can put whatever on the blockchain. For example, an art piece, who belongs, who made this art piece? Then uh, it's all a song, for example, and it's called a non-fungible token. You can give property to that as well. Or a smart contract. You can write a contract on there, basically automate. That is very important for the economy, for governments as well, having these smart contracts. You can even like put the constitution up there or a constitution or whatever it is, a governance structure, then we call it a decentralized autonomous organization. That's basically what a DAO is. And, and whatever, you can put whatever up on the blockchain.